Hello and welcome back to Game of Thrones mod for Crusader Kings 2. We have two new custom courtiers. We have Yaren Tobal, who is a bastard who has decided to take his own house name and is trying to separate himself from that kind of title. He's had adversity for many years and he heard of our father Urus and how he was a bastard and how he got land and how he has now has a powerful dynasty. You know, his dynasty has carried on, and he wants to join our court to kind of uh, emulate him, to do similar things. We also have Euron Drum, who earned his rather gruesome nickname because of how many men he killed on his first raid, and he has decided to come here because, um, well, he would like to be in charge of a mercenary company, and he needs somebody with the money to fund it. So, that's what we're going to start off with first. Now, I haven't used mercenary companies in, uh, like, in CK2 at all, as in for, um, the new Conclave stuff with it, where you can actually create your own. So I'm interested to see how good they actually are. So, assemble mercenary company. Gather some men under the command of Euron and make them available for anyone to hire. You will get some part of the income that the company brings in when hired by another party. Okay. So it costs us 50. We do not have any mercenary bands, so we can do it. He has a military education, and he is an adult. So we lose 50 gold. I believe it also has a longer cost as well. Also, can we get this group for free? So, urine drop. Yeah, uh, no. It will still cost us gold to hire them. Okay, interesting. Um, right, well, I guess we'll go on a month and we'll see how much that actually costs. Righteously in prison, we got some things we could do, but we're still on our reaving, so I think we'll just get started. People are calling in favors. Cool. Kyle Aaron is now known as the ill ruler. Um is he dishonorable? Nah, he's just craven. Okay. Well, we've got some interesting stuff happening. Uh, my just car, Sir Lannis, kindly suggests that it would be of our benefit to our realm if I studied the languages spoken at foreign courts. He offer he also offers himself to aid me in my studies. Um, well, you see, the thing is, we're slothful, so uh, I can't. If they can't speak Ironborn, then they are not important. Yes. Um, right. Did we get shy or proud? Or proud? Nope. Cool. It's been a couple of months. Let's see how much this mercenary band costs us. It costs us nothing. Okay. Cool. I thought it cost you money. Um, guess not. I mean, nobody's hired them yet, anyway. Cool. So they, they, he just kind of has this band. Okay, interesting. I wonder if they'll ever make their money back for us. I wonder if we get any pop-ups if they're hired as well. Uh, the reaving has come to an end. We have returned from across the sea after abiding the old way of reaving and pillaging like true Ironborn. We've gained much respect for our daring and ambition. Uh, so we lose reaving and we get lots of opinion. The regency has ended. And now we are going to imprison both of these people. We're going to try and imprison them at the same time. There we go. We caught one of them. We caught Theomor, winch. Okay. Theomor, uh, do we even need to hold anything for you? No, you're just known as dishonorable. Well, I guess we could just execute him. Or we could sell him into slavery. Oh, we got a lot of options. We could drown him. Let the drowned god take him. That would give us tyranny. Um, that doesn't seem like something we want to do. Um, we call for a trial. Oh, we haven't done a trial? Oh, for some reason I thought we need... To... Oh, trials used to turn up here, I think, didn't they? But now they turn up on the character. I think I already learned this last episode. Um, yeah, okay. I was seeing what whether we could actually sell anyone into slavery, but it appears that it is not allowed. So let's, uh, uh let's call for a trial. Theomor Winch has demanded trial by combat and summoning his champion to Saltcliffe. He will remain in the dungeons until then. How good is he at fighting? Eight. Oh, okay. He will remain in the dungeons until then. The guards drag Theomor Winch up from his cell and throw him at your feet. I've come for justice, he says. By right of birth and blood, I demand trial by combat. So he's fighting himself. Okay. One of my men of arms will have to fight. A soldier named Christopher. Rain. Uh, are none of our bodyguards able to fight? Um, Agor is maimed. You, why could you not fight Ma Mr. Mayford? Um, I don't know. Is it because he's a commander? 
He's uh, maybe it's because he's commander and you have to be like exclusively a bodyguard. Dolph. He he's exclusively a bodyguard. Why could he not fight? Huh. Okay. Interesting. Maybe they have to like me. Anyway, one of my men at arms will have to fight. Christopher. Power of Harris Host has declared Harris Conquest of Great Wick on Lord Uran of Great Wick. Okay, cool. Uh, how many men does she have? 600 versus his 2,000. That's not going to go well. So we have uh, Tristopher has just arrived. Tristopher is not so good at fighting. Well, fight well. You watch in horror as Tristopher falls to the floor. Theomar winches his sword, grievously wounding him. The prisoner takes his leave, walking out the doors with a smile on his face as the entire court looks on disbelief. This, this can't be happening. Now we could always just imprison him again. Righteously. Oh, and he's gone. He ran away to uh, the drums court. Wait, did I say Aegon was uh, incapable? Right, let's get it here. He is incapable. Interesting. He's been declared incapable. Uh, now, I don't believe that necessarily means he is incapable. It just means he's been declared incapable. So, uh, he has a regent. Which, who is Lord Tristan the Old? Was he not in a revolt against Aegon at one point? I'm sure he was. Anyway. So, he's probably going to be replaced by his heir, Vakar, very soon. I should probably look at where the dr other dragons are just for a second, because we did have one missing, don't we? Uh, we have a wild dragon, we have Marax, this is wild, yes, that's the one. We have an untamed one, which is Fafnar, who is currently kind of under the control of Vakar, because uh, he's still growing up. And we have the two dragon riders. Cool. Uh, nothing else we really need to do. We need a new sworn shield, apparently. Was Christopher one of our sworn shields, or am I missing something here? Maybe he was, and I just put him in there. Need that? He's dead now. I don't know. Uh, Titus would be awful. How about Yaren? Yaren can be a sworn shield. Cool. Council position still have no drowned men? Nope. Okay. Or as the game would call it, drowned mans. King Lauren the Eagle has led the Westlander Westerosi to your war over Great Wick on King Aegon Westeros. Interesting. So there's two wars for Great Wick going on right now. What has happened to the Reach? This is an interesting war. Uh, Stefan Greenshield Peasant Revolt, not the one we're interested in. Prince Mace of the Reach uh, has 44% uh, war score currently, and looks like he has more power, just judging from a quick uh, scan of that. Looks like the Reach is going to be under new leadership. Still the Gardeners, though. My lady, it's come to my attention nobody has been designated Regent for Saltcliffe. Uh, yeah, sure, Igor, you can be... Uh, Regent. That seems fine. Christopher says his favourite toy is missing and he won't go to bed without it. I may have thrown it out today when I was tidying up. I'll offer to buy a new one, or I guess I'll go find it. Now this is an interesting one, because we have to decide between greedy and slothful, because uh, if I have to go and find it, then, uh, well, you know, that's, that's going against our slothful nature. But if I have to buy a new one, that's costing us money. Um, I don't know. I don't really know. I guess we'll just choose to buy a new one. My offer to purchase a new toy was rejected by Christopher. Yes, fantastic. He is upset that I would even suggest such a thing. There is no pleasing this child. Yes, exactly. Well, at least we didn't have to spend money on it. That's uh, fantastic. Uh, there's tax law changes happening. Uh, Dialed is no longer our Lord Treasurer. What? Or w why not? Am um, I missing something? What? What happened to you? You, you want to be my treasurer? Um. Okay. That's weird. Anyway, we'll move on. Game's weird. Uh, Harwin of the Iron Isles died of Grayscale. He is very much dead dead. Who took over his thing? His sibling, Harlan, now has that land. Cool. Under my guidance, my young son, Christopher, is slowly mastering the art of swordsmanship. He's a poor fighter. He did actually get fussy from the previous thing as well, so he's got some stewardship. He's looking much better than us already. Right. Uh, anything else we want to be doing? Not really. I can see if we've got any money for our mercenary band. Uh, no. Okay. 
An opportunity has presented itself to uh, you to let everyone be reminded of the king's rule. There's a skilled minter that you can hire to mint new coins for the realm with a portrait of King Lauren's face, as well as an inscription commemorating yourself. So we can mint them for glory, we can debase the mints with less precious metals for profits, or there's no need for additional currencies. Well, obviously, we're going to debase the mints because you get extra money. Ah, we're now deceitful. Fantastic. A new trait. Right. Uh, there's a man I need to arrest, another one I need to assassinate. My spymaster Agar could help with either the arrest or the assassination. Uh, definitely arrest. That's the one we're doing more than assassinating. The Peasant's Revolt is over in the Reach. Interesting. Who... What's the other one? We got 77% for the other war. Cool. I was going to say who ended the revolt, basically. At age 22, Titus died of poor health. So that is Titus who had his many sons. So, uh, yeah, the many sons are now presumably all educated by us, if I understand it right. Because we're in the court. I could be wrong. It could be like the Maester or something. I forget how uh, Conclave works, especially with the mod. There's another Peasant's Revolt, by the way. So, that's exciting. Oh, we've got Invite to Plot. Uh, we'd like you to join our plot to kill Garen Ladybright. No. But, uh, good to know who's uh, going to do the plot. Can we actually see some more plots? We have no known plots. Fantastic work, Agor. You're, you're really a fantastic spymaster. Doing a good job. Showing us exactly where all the plots are. Derek Lannister died uh, stillborn. You okay, does Lannister have... Yeah, he has many siblings, so... It doesn't really matter. A daughter was born to Laios, and Lavike, daughter of Rakio, named Annalise. Okay, so to him and the other custom character. Well, the custom character. Hey, we had a crash! That's a lot of fun, so we're going to uh, just keep going. Let's hope it doesn't happen again. Uh, no, I don't want to join your plot to kill Garen Lady Bright. I never want to join your plot to kill Garen Lady Bright. You will ask me every time, no? So, uh, that's, uh, that's something. Right. Ooh, what was that? Uh, it's a different lot. La Lannister was different this time and died. Uh, Laios and Lavakai had a daughter. Not daughter. Son. Wait. Oh, it says daughter there, which is what's completely threw me off. That's fine. Alright, yes, I was thinking while we're off here, we do have a leash here. I was looking at how many men he had. Our leash has 1,047 men. We have like um, 1.47k men. We have slightly more. Well, we have roughly the same amount, but his men also includes the strength of us. In fact, nearly all his strength comes from us. So what we should do is we should try and get a claim on him and try and press it. Uh, there's nothing we can declare. We can't declare war this very second on him anyway. But if we can get a claim, that would be fantastic. We declare war. Esquid Winch is dead. She was married to Garen Ladybright. Interesting. A period of illness. I would say a, a assassination attempt gone wrong would be more likely, but whatever. Uh, Rob accepted King Torrin of a witch peace offer. So, like, that's the uh, peasant's revolt over. Up there. How's the uh, gardener revolt going? It is almost done. Yeah. So, the reach is almost going to be under control of someone else. What's Aegon actually doing right now? Um, yeah, he's just in lots of wars against them. Okay. Fair enough, fair enough. King Torrin decided to exile Rob. A couple of household knights are practicing. The cold-blooded Destrier and the warm-blooded Charger amble towards each other. The riders preparing to crush their lances against each other. I watch the Destrier crash to the ground with its rider crushed beneath them. Good fight, or I can say are deliberately trying to kill themselves. Um... What would we think? Um, we'd probably just be like, good fight. Yeah, miss the least effort, I guess. We're all about least effort. Oh! Trentos is dead. He was the one who murdered uh, Margaret, uh, not Margaret, Meredith Lydon. So, uh, uh, that's kind of fair. We still haven't made any money off our mercenaries. Is there like a way of checking longer? No. Yes, the mercenaries still aren't hired. We could we could hire them ourselves again still. For the normal price. See, is it the normal price? How many men do they have? Um it is exactly the normal price. 
So yeah, I, I don't get the mercenary company. Nothing seems to be happening with them, but that's fine. It's nobody's hiring mercenaries right now. Uh, Egan appears to be winning his war over Great Wick. Dear Lady Brella of Saltcliffe, I hereby invite you to the wedding of Newt Greyjoy and Gretchel Marlin in Castle Rock. Your presence would be greatly appreciated. I look forward to your attendance, Lord Vicrin Greyjoy. Sure, we're gluttonous, we'll go. That's fine. Under my guidance, my young daughter Frenya is slowly mastering the art of swordsmanship. Good. Okay. Um, how old is our son? He's seven. Okay, he can still be being educated. He could be being educated by us, but we could maybe move him on to someone else right now because, um... Well, to be honest with you, educating people seems like an awful lot of work. Like, I think we could probably put it on to someone else. Uh, who should educate him? Do we have anyone we like? No, we have people we don't like. Nobody we actually like. Um... We could always send him off to a relative. Uh, we have marriage ties with our brother-in-law. We could send him off to Cod Hall. That seems reasonable. Or to... Yeah, those, those are both Cod Hall. We could send him off to our brother-in-law. That's not ridiculous. Cod Hall is... Directly underneath the... Um, King Lauren. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's see if our brother-in-law will take him. It will not take our non-aggression pact. But... Um, might take our child so we would send Christopher to be educated by um, Master Hagen of Claude Hall. That seems reasonable. Yes. There we go. Right. Let's see if we can get our claim before the end of this episode. That'd be good. To the elegant devil Brella, your wisdom mercy legendary, I gladly accept the guardianship contract between Christopher and Master Hagen. Still won't take the non-aggression pact, but he does like us more. Uh, I wasn't really going for the non-aggression pact too much, because it doesn't really give us anything, but it was still interesting to see if he would take it. Lord Vicrin greeted us warmly to the wedding. Fine arbor gold was served, and the most lovely music was played throughout the whole night. The ceremony between Newt and Gretchel in the Grand Feast and the Grand Feast shall be held upon the morrow. Thanks for having us. Now Gretchel Merlin and Newt Greyjoy stand before the ground god to take up the holy vow of marriage. The great lords and ladies of Pike look on as drapes the arms of House Greyjoy around the bride to finally seal their marriage. So Newt Greyjoy, just out of curiosity, is that his only son or... No, it's like his third son being married to... Um, the Merlin's, like, second daughter. Okay, now for the feast. Uh, I was seated beside a person I'd never really talked to before. We ended up uh, together in the garden with a couple of bottles from Lord Vicrin's well-stocked Dornish wine cellar. We're now friends with Rhonda Drum. Okay. Rhonda Drum is the um, second uh, daughter of Dennis Drum. I think I've made a new friend. Fantastic. It's always good to have new friends. King Mace of the Reach has served the High Lord of Golden Grove from Lord Edmure. And the Kingdom of the Reach from Lord Edmure. So the Reach is now all under the control of King Mace. Old Town and Tumble Town should go back underneath it any second now. And uh, yeah, he seems like a reasonable ruler. Um, so if we have a quick look here. He has one child, so that's Sir Owen would be the next in line. Who's the next in line after that? Then it goes back to Edmund. Or uh, Edmure. Uh, we're going to have to go to the dynasty thing here. Uh, yes. So it would go Owen. And then and then it would just jump back to uh, Edmund. Okay, interesting. So it doesn't really change what line of the reach is going on right now. Uh, the feast is winding down, now only the bedding remains. Newt and Gretchen, or Gretchel are stripped of all garments by the revelers to make many a body joke along the way, they are finally bundled into a bedchamber where they are finally left alone, a fine tradition. Cool. Well, I think this is a good point to end the episode. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.